was with that fish for probably less than a second but everything was just perfect. The sun was hitting the water at the right angle. The fish was so lit up. It was, it was, it was hues of, of green and blue and, and stripes and, and patterns all over it. It was just ready to feed. That shot has been in my brain for, for years. I've known what it looks like and it just, it, 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 it connected. This is the holy grail of billfish photography. I think that moment was the, uh, was the sort of pinnacle of my experience with that fish. The footage that we have in these videos is basically the tail end of a project that we've been working on for must be two years now. Um, to capture still images of a free swimming blue marlin. Normally when you fish with a, with, a, with a fishing boat or a marlin boat, it is a rare occasion that a blue marlin will come up behind the boat and no matter what type of techniques you're using to fish, I was asking these boats in particular that I've worked with to basically take the hooks out of their lures and forego even having a shot at that fish. So it was a very long and tedious process, but began with finding a group of people, uh, in this case, the owner of, of a boat called Click Through, Keith English, um, and his uh, really accomplished crew, uh, and saying to them, guys, will you bear with me on this one and let's, let's see what we can do uh, and see if we can bring a marlin to the boat and, and control it. I joined the boat uh, a, a few days later. Um, I flew over to Bermuda. As I arrived at the boat, we sat down with the crew um, and said to the guys, uh, this is what I want to do. And <laughs> the, the initial reaction was quite humorous. I, I think these guys were shaking their heads going, you want to do what? It was a, uh, a process that didn't happen immediately. And we went through and or began this, this very long learning curve. As the call for the initial lure went out, I literally had five to 15 seconds uh, to get into my mask and fins, grab my camera and bail off the correct side of the boat. You know, to tell you the truth, it was, it's a pretty, pretty scary experience. You jump in the water, you get sucked around and messed around by the cavitation and bubble trail of the boat. As you right yourself and get focused and, and, and realize that there's a lure coming at you at, at uh, eight knots, probably about 12 miles an hour. And on the back of that, there's a fish with a very long bill, a very long spiky bill, you know, chasing that lure. The problem there were the shots were so fast. It, it, I was in the water, I got to see the fish for three or four seconds and it was gone. I wasn't getting the quality time I needed. And then the trip came to an end and uh, we had basic information, we had tried a few techniques, but we were a long way from, from getting this thing right. The funny thing about traveling around the world and, and trying for the shot is you, you, you seem to get a lot of that, uh, well, you should have been here yesterday, or you should, uh, oh, this is not the right destination, you need to try that destination. In Bermuda, it was, well, you know, we could do this even better if we tried this in St. Thomas, so because of the number of fish arrays and the size of fish and so on. And I thought, well, you know, let's give it a try. And, uh, Keith was very kind enough to invite me back down to join his boat um, in St. Thomas. The first day I arrived, we chatted amongst the crew and, and, and decided that we were going to change things up a little bit from our experience in Bermuda. So right off the bat, we decided let's shut things down um, and slow the boat down tremendously and see what, what happens. We did deal with the three or four days of some very big sea, but things, things came right for us and, and, and every fish that we we sort of raised we started slowing the boat down more and more and more and and, and eventually w we came to the conclusion that we could control this fish the most exciting was our second to last day when when the sea was just incredible it was it was completely flat it was just dream conditions we got in with fish after fish after fish after fish I think we raised five blues that day I was getting closer and closer and closer and then I believe it was fish number four or fish number five I got in the water at that stage I was completely calm and relaxed there was no more dashing around to see am I gonna get this am I gonna get this where's this fish where's this fish 
and this blue marlin came straight for me directly for the camera I had an opportunity to just focus the camera and I let go with the motor drive and I, I remember the fish going past my brain just said to me you've got it you, you've got it you've got the shot and this is what it is this is what it feels like to get the shot I swam back to the boat I handed up the camera I've got to sort of do a, a seal bounce to get through the the door that's actually designed to to pull fish through I rolled over and I looked up and said guys we can go home now and uh, they were all confused and I've got the shot uh, <laughs> I think that my knees shook for the next half an hour. I was hyperventilating. <laughs> I was high-fiving everyone. Everyone was so excited. And it was great to see the excitement in the crew. You know, this was their work as well as mine. And it was this, this dream sequence that, that came together. You know, I, I don't say I'm the first person ever to do this, jumping in the water with blues, unhooked and swimming with them and so on. I, I, there, there are other people who have done it. But um, this was a monumentous occasion for me personally. And, 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 and I got the shot that hasn't been shot. It's not just a blue marlin swimming, uh, free swimming in the water. It's a blue marlin in its just most exaggerated uh, um, coloration and, 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 and mode and, and, and aggression um, to, uh, while, it, while it feeds. I don't think it gets any more real and, and explosive than these images. Once we had the still that we were looking for, um, we decided to start shooting some video on the last day. Conditions again were fantastic. This was, was always going to be the last fish of the day. It was late in the afternoon. You can see the water is a lot darker. And, and this fish came in, in, its, in a, a completely black. It was, its melanin uh, 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 coating was completely on. He seemed to be distracted all of a sudden. His color changed very quickly. You can see a white look on his face with a white belly and then continued to circle me and just circle me. I think in total it was almost four minutes. It then swam away. I switched off the video camera and bang! I had been T-boned in the back uh, left thigh by the shark. I got over the initial fright and hit the record on the camera and that's where you see the sharks coming back to me. And initially I thought, you know, it's, it's one or two sharks, maybe three, and I can handle that. It's, it's fine. And I, I didn't call to the boat initially but the sharks kept coming and they kept coming and they kept coming and as I turned around there were more and more and more. At this stage I realized that there was a problem. You know, I, I, can, I can buy myself in the water, handle two, three of these silky sharks, but they were gesturing, they were ready to feed. These were not curious sharks. The, the shark that you see coming directly from the deep and coming straight up to me and looking straight into the camera, looking for an opportunity to get around the, the big camera housing to have a bite was the point at which I stuck my head out the water and shouted, sharks! As soon as my guys realized and I called, um, they just dropped everything, backed the boat down. Oh, 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 and I started swimming towards them in a hurry with these guys literally at my at my fin tips. And this is why I deal with these sort of people. They are, I trust them, I trust the captain, I trust the mates, and, and, and they were incredible. <laughs> I think they, they got almost as big a fright as I did, and uh, it, it, it's nice to, <laughs> to have that level of care. But people, you, uh, you, put your, uh, you put your trust and your life in, basically, when you're in the water like that. This entire St. Thomas trip, and it's not just St. Thomas, it's, it's the work that we've done up till, up till then, uh, was incredible. And uh, I keep on using that word again, incredible, incredible, and it was. It, it, I'm, I'm, I'm over the moon and, and overjoyed with the, the stills I was able to shoot while I was there and the interactions I had in the water with these incredible fish. They are, they're magnificent. They are truly the, 
the, the pinnacle of, uh, of billfish, pelagic fish, open ocean feeders. I hope you enjoyed this sort of behind the scenes video into, uh, into the shooting of our Blue Marlin still shots here at Okio. And please feel free to join us via our website and our blog, um, as well as our spot tracker to keep uh, live updates of where we're shooting and what we're shooting. Hope to see you again.